Today we're going to be creating this thing you see here. It's uh, going to let you control the background colors with different sliders. So if you click on green, it'll become green. A random color will generate a random color. Um, the blue button obviously goes to blue, and you can use the sliders to experiment with the RGB color values. Uh, so that's the goal anyway. Maybe it'll take us a couple days. Uh, so first thing we need to do is we're going to create a new project. And I think I'm just going to call this one Swing Colors. Swing Colors. And Swing Colors 2. And you can create it whatever. Swing Colors. I already have a project that I was experimenting with before. And we do new. Uh, we're going to create a new package because it's just good practice. We're just going to call this main. There's only going to be one package in this uh, project. And there's only going to be one class in this object. And we'll just call that Swing Colors. And the first thing we want to do is import some libraries. In this case, we're just going to import it all at once because we're just experimenting with Java Swing. So all you have to do is type import Java X dot swing and then period and uh, that symbol, meaning that you want the whole thing. I just want all Java Swing, um, even though we're not going to use it all. It's not efficient to do it this way, um, but it's fine. Public, static, void, main, string args and in our main method I'm only going to create a new swing colors object which we haven't defined yet but I'm going to define it in a minute and um, just a second alright so now let's just write a constructor method and a public uh, swing colors and all the constructor method, again, which is just the same name as the class, all it's going to call is a method called init that I'm going to create in a sec. Um, so let's create init down here, public void, and it doesn't return anything, init. All this is going to do is initialize the stuff we need to use. Now, in the past, we didn't necessarily have these things as fields. Um, but in this case, I'm going to create these things as fields because multiple classes of objects are going to have to use them. Uh, we're going to have some private classes to deal with the action listeners and the, um, the things that listen to the button and make them do stuff. So we're going to create some fields here. We're going to create a private J button called blue butt. We're going to create a private J slider called blue slider. We're going to create a private uh, J label called blue label. We're going to create a private, oops, I spelled label wrong. And we're going to create a private J panel called the panel. And we're going to create a private J frame called the frame. And private just means that only this class has direct access to it. You can give other classes access to it through public methods, but it just helps protect your data and keep people from using it in ways you don't intend. Okay, so those are the, uh, the fields that we needed to create, and now we need to create a bunch of stuff. Uh, we need to define some aspects of them. So let's do that with the button. Blue button equals new J button and we're going to give it a title of blue and that's it for the blue button now the blue slider is a little more complicated we're going to make it a new J slider and we're going to have it go from value of 2 or 0 to 255 because that's the range of colors uh, they go from 0 to 255 so blue slider dot set major tick spacing and we want just to tick it off at 50. That, you can change that but that's a good value to start with. Blue slider dot set paint, oops, set paint ticks true. So that just means it's going to paint the little tick marks. Uh, blue slider dot set paint labels true. Blue slider and then let's give it an initial value set value to, we'll start it at 255. 
Uh, cool, so that's our blue slider. And now let's, uh, the label, the sliders don't have labels, so we have to add a label to the panel for the slider. So we're just gonna add blue, sli uh, blue label equals new J label. And this is just a thing, J label. It's another swing component, and we're just gonna call it blueness. Balloonus, blueness. Now we need to define some attributes of uh, the panel and the frame, and then we're going to be able to display this thing, and that's part of this video is going to be done. So uh, the panel, we need to set it to, it's a new J panel, and remember you just hang things on panels and you hang the panel on the frame. The panel dot add, we need to add some stuff to the panel. We're going to add the blue butt, and it doesn't matter the order you put these things in, so just play around with it, dot add, uh, and then uh, blue slider and the panel dot add uh, blue label can't type uh, alright and so now we need to set some things up for the frame uh, the frame on which we're gonna hang everything equals a new J frame the frame dot set default close operation and now remember this is just what happens when you click on the red red X uh, in the upper left hand corner of the frame the frame dot set size and we're just gonna start at 500 by 500 you can choose any value for this though that you would like oh I forgot a semicolon there um, and we need to define a couple other things other attributes for the frame so we're going to the frame dot set resizable we're just gonna say this is true you can set it to false if you like and then we need to add the panel the frame dot add the panel with all of our buttons on it and then we're finally gonna set it to visible the frame dot set visible true and now if we run this program uh, oh int init not int if we run this program it should I believe bring up our panel on the frame with all of the stuff on it and we can move this around but it doesn't do anything quite yet and that's the next thing I'm going to do in the video but how do we make these buttons do anything well like scanners that listen for the keyboards there are things like uh, that listen to uh, swing components they're called listeners and we're gonna add what's called an action listener. Now, how do you know about this? You know about it because I told you about it. There's no way to know about it without just learning how to use these tools and what tools are available. So there's a set of things available to you uh, that are all used in slightly different ways and they're called listeners and one of them is an action listener. And you need to add an action listener to any button that you want to be a functional button. So uh, we're actually going to create a private class, which is new, I know, but we're going to create a private class. You can create a class within a class that only the swing colors class will have access to. No other class, not a public class, just a private class inside of another class, which is a little weird, but it's whatever. Uh, so we're going to create a private class called my action listener. And it's going to implement what's called an interface, and it's going to implement the action listener interface. And we're going to get into uh, uh, interfaces next. Um, but uh, the thing you need to know is in interfaces like a uh, contract between your program and the compiler, the compiler says, hey, if you uh, implement this interface, you need to implement these methods. That's really all it is. And so here's a method that you need to implement. An interface just defines the methods that you must implement. So all this says is uh, you must implement a method called action performed, and it's got an action event, which is an object that knows how to listen for various things on the in swing components. So this object is important. An action event is a thing that's defined that really has a lot of functional uh, abilities that you don't need to define. And all we're going to say is if the source of the action event called E, this object called E, if that source, E dot if, uh, we're going to say if, E dot get source equals uh, blue butt, we want to do something. And in this case, we just want to set the background color of the panel. The panel dot set background color, color dot blue. 
and those are just enum values, the color object, you're familiar with those. Uh, it's not going to do anything yet because we haven't added an action listener to our class and we haven't added that action listener to our button. Uh, so we're going to add another um, uh, field. So we're going to say private my action listener uh, uh, class, the listener. Uh, private my, yep, that's right. And then we're going to initialize it. We're going to say uh, the listener equals new my action listener class. And then we're going to say blue butt dot add the listener. So that just like plants the object called the listener, which implements the action listener interface on top of the blue butt and if everything goes as planned it should actually change the background color of the panel. Let's see. So if we run the program now and we click on the blue thing, bingo, it changed the color of the background. So we've got a functional button, but how do we make a functional slider? Because that's the other component that we have to do. Well, sliders actually don't listen, uh, are not listened to by action listeners. They are, and you just have to learn this, they are listened to by these things called change listeners. So change listeners listen for changes in components, not actions. Like a button click is an action, and a slider value change is a change. I don't know if that helps you think about it. So we have to create another private class. We say private class my change listener, and you can name this class anything you want. And it has to implement the interface, implements, you guessed it, change listener. And now, again, the compiler is going to want us to uh, actually import the change listener which is a class of objects that knows how to listen for changes on swing components and then it's going to want us to add the unimplemented methods and we're going to do some stuff here uh, we're going to say in like in the past if the source of the change e dot get source equals the blue slider then we want to do some stuff we want to get the value from the blue slider and set the color of the background to that much blueness. Alright, so we're gonna say uh, blue slider. A slider knows how to tell you its value. Dot get value. Um, well, let's just do it this way so that it's clear. We're just gonna create an int called blue. Uh, oh no, there is there an int called blueness? Blueness equals, did I create that yet? No, so we need to create that. So we're going to create another uh, couple fields. We're going to create a private my change listener called the change listener. And then we're going to create a private field called private int blueness. And we need to initialize those things. So here we're going to initialize the change listener equals new change or my change listener and blueness let's just set it initially to zero and uh, or to 255 why don't we do that 255 and then it doesn't really matter and then uh, blueness equals blue slider dot get value then we need to set the panel dot set background color background color to a new color uh, of value zero zero RGB and blueness uh, and one more thing we forgot to do we need to add uh, that listener my change listener to the slider so let's do that right here blue slider dot add change listener the change listener and fingers crossed if I did everything correctly uh, we'll run it and if we click on the slider it'll change the color what do you think hey look at that so the slider now is a functional slider okay so your job is again to mimic the um, 
the stuff I did to use the stuff I did to create this project. And it's